people who helped me in my process of rehabilitating myself, I'd say they kind of taught me how to trust other people. While I've been locked up, I've met a lot of people who actually care about me and you know want to see me do better things in my life. That kind of just started that thinking process of what I want to do in life and what do I feel like is my calling. We're not our crimes, you know. We still have a lot of life to live. You know, we still have a lot of proving to do. Looking at the next generation of kids that are going to follow, DOC and J Ray kids, we need to change the system. Just trying to help. I just feel like our voices are, you know, finally being heard. I've been trying to get this bill passed for four years because it's never really been about me. It's about those who are being affected by the system at this very moment. Here comes Aaron. When I first got incarcerated, uh, I thought I was going to be incarcerated for like two weeks and then my mom was going to come and get me out and that was going to be that. But uh, I found out like, no, that's not how it works. And I was going to be looking at some, some hard time. The crimes I was charged for was uh, attempted murder in the first degree, assault one in the first degree, uh, robbery in the first degree, burglary in the first degree, uh, theft of a motor vehicle, theft of a firearm. I was just pretty much out in the streets, uh, hanging with a bad crew, you could say. And um, I didn't really care about going to school, didn't really care about other people. And so now uh, I'm serving a 21 year sentence. I'm going to be here at Green Hill until I'm 21. After that, I'd be sent to DOC for the remaining of my sentence. My release date is 2034. Green Hill School, when you look at it from the outside, you see it as like a prison, but it's not really like that. It is a juvenile institution where youth who are convicted of crimes under or before their 18th birthday are sent. It's a place where you better yourself and along the way you can also help others better themselves. Here at the juvenile system, you get probably more opportunities to talk to people who might care about what you want to do in life. You get a lot of contact with the staff that work here. But when there's a smaller population like at Green Hill, you know, they're more able to work with us. You go through the, where your index finger was? They call it treatment. It's, you know, you focus on what you need to focus on so you can, you know, work on yourself. This. Yep. To get your right hand. With JRA, uh, I got my GED and graduated high school. I'm working on a degree right now in business. So put your collar up. I maintained a job, the button, the top button. which I never thought I would actually be able to do. I've been in Green Hill since March 7th of last year, I believe. For me, the, the best uh, thing for me was just the individual treatment that I have with my, with my counselor. I'm not big on group counseling or anything like that. I like to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one session and build trust with my counselor and be able to be open with them. And I've learned a lot about myself that I wouldn't have otherwise found out about myself in the first place. Oh. When I first got incarcerated, you can't do it up there though. You gotta do it. There's certain people that helped me. Get One of them came and talked to me. I got socks for you. Well. You know, I kind of opened up and I was like, "All right, we'll see where this goes." You didn't ask for socks. <laughs> do you need socks? I don't have enough. Socks. <laughs> I kind of reflected on myself and uh, 
was just asking myself questions like, what do you want to do with your life? Where do you want to go? I was just kind of at an awe. So especially with this stuff, I'm trying not to get in the hands. It's hard to come off. This is like the first time I even asked myself these questions and actually thought about it. So basically just spread, spread it around everywhere, especially with their scuff marks. And you want to brush it out really well. Being in the uh, institutions that I've been in and seeing work. youth that are my age, older than me and younger than me, go through the same process that I'm going through, uh, same struggles, same, same pain, kind of helped me really think about what I want to do and that's pretty much what I want to do, which is to advocate for youth, advocate for people actually having a, having a chance to be who they want to be. Are you ready? No. You gotta, here, gotta be centered. He was there at seven o'clock this morning. I see and heard Maple call out. I'm like, Garrett must be excited. Wow. It's like sleep. seven o'one and he was couldn't here. Couldn't sleep. Been up since like 4.30. He's pretty excited. <laughs> Look at him. He's like, I can't believe this is real. Seven o'clock. <laughs> One night I got, you know, way too high. I was just on like five different things. Look at Jake's picture. I was out of it. I know, I saw it. Your intake picture, look at it. And I heard somebody really badly. And you know, it's not even like I wanted to do it. Like I woke up the next day thinking, what did I do? Like, was this a dream? I was charged when I was 16 with attempted murder and a burglary in the first degree. What? Million dollar bail, 25 to life. And so I just sat in county for nine months praying to God, That's you know? four years ago. That literally doesn't look like it. It doesn't. Uh, facial hair, long hair, glasses now. And luckily, my victim, which I thank God every day for, thought that I would benefit more if I stayed in a juvenile facility. And she was like, this is just a young 16-year-old boy who, you know, was getting straight A's in high school and just made a horrible mistake. But I don't want him to have to suffer for the rest of his life. He can change. That's called being in uh, county jail for nine months, 23 and one. That's what that is. I got my color back in my face. I got, you know. I just feel like there's a stigma with criminals and crime. One at a time. The stigma of you're a criminal, you're always going to be a criminal. I'm sorry as it gets for my crime. But when that judge hit the gavel and said, this is your sentence, that's me paying my debt back to society. America has what, like 2.3 million people in prison? What does that say? Is we should just lock people away and just throw away the key? Banjo. And just keep this vicious cycle going? I think that messed up youth can turn into messed up adults. And so if they're not being helped, it's just going to mess up society. 10-10 on the steps, the lobbyists. We got involved with Capital Classroom, which is an agreement between um, TVW and Green Hill School, basically, where we met with a lobbyist once a week for the entire legislative session. We learned more about how the legislation session works, how to kind of like support a bill. Our lobbyist, Carolyn Logue, she asked us which bills we would like to work on. And so we found a couple bills that we were interested in. We chose Senate Bill 6160 and House Bill 2907. And gross second substitute Senate Bill 6160. Hearing no objections, so ordered. What it did is, is it raises the juvenile age to 25. And so when a youth gets sentenced to juvenile life, it's no longer until 21, it's now 25. And it eliminates the auto decline law for certain offenses. If you're charged an adult at 16 or 17, those are only two ages you can be charged an adult as, which is called being auto decline. Keeping them in the JRA system, they have uh, more treatment opportunities rather than going to a DOC facility where treatment opportunities aren't really available. You know, to stay here for a little bit longer and work on themselves, work on the things they need to get done in order to transition back into the community and be successful and not go back to the old lifestyle they were living. So you said the, the president of the Senate and the, the House Speaker has to... Have to sign it. Sign it? Okay. Yeah, that so should happen today. we met today. weekly with Carolyn, and she basically just reported out to us what was going on with the bill, you know, where it was at, whether it was in the House or in the Senate. Uh, Carolyn Logue uh, to testify. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I'll be very quick. Uh, my name is Carolyn Logan. I'm here today on behalf of a group of young men in the Green Hill Correctional Facility. Uh, they asked me to come up here today and ask you to support 6160. Basically, it was just trying to bring our voices to the table, you know, tell the Senate and the House and just everybody at the Capitol why this bill would benefit the community. We wrote letters to senators and representatives, letting them know that we would really be interested in these bills passing, and uh, it would mean a lot to us. They feel that they are getting much better programs um, to help them rehabilitate, rather than sending them to adult court, where adult correctional facilities where they do not get the same level of, of attention and, and basically education on how to be successful um, when they get out so they do not come back. And they felt very strongly that that actually, um, if they can be successful, then that will actually reduce state money in the over in the long term. She never came back with bad news. It was always, oh yeah, we got this person on board or, you know, I'm, I'm doing this. So it was always good news. We were always progressing with her. So it was giving us a lot of hope. It was giving us like a lot of like courage and, you know, like we, we actually can do this, you know? Yeah, hurry up. All right, is everyone else ready to go? Yep. Yeah. ready? Garrett and Aaron come with Brian. Joe and Jake go with Julie. What county are you from, Joe? Clark, I got them Clark? I got them all. What? You guys have to ride in the back seat. Going to the Capitol was like a, a surreal moment for me. You know, I've always known the Capitol was in Olympia and what went on there, but it was never like I was in a step foot in there, you know. I'm like the first person I know in my family and my friends to actually go to the Capitol. And so that was a big thing for me. It was, you know, all smiles for me. I couldn't stop smiling. What kind of made you guys want to help people like us as, say? Uh, so a year and a half ago, we heard what's going on in Oregon. And Oregon is the only other state in the country that does it. And they've been doing it since 1991, mm -hmm. where they take youth who have been adjudicated in the adult court, but they keep them in the juvenile rehabilitation setting until age 25. And the recidivism rate, reoffense rate, for those youth is 22%. And for youth here in Washington, the same cohort of uh, young people, it's almost 70%. So it's pretty clear that the rehabilitative setting is what you need. People age 16 to 25, so your age range, statistically commit like all the crimes. Yeah. All the major crimes, all the minor crimes, because it's the crime committing age, right? Your brain's not developed and you man come from an environment that wasn't stable, and so you're just trying to cope and survive. And I'd like the courts to be able to respond to you differently. Talk a little bit about, if any of you, about um, the education you've gotten and the, like, have you gotten the vocational training, particular skills? Or, you know? I've completed my high school diploma and graduated before my class would have. <laughs> um, I got my shielded middle <coughs> art certificates. Excellent. Um, vertical and overhead. Um, I've taken multiple college courses. Like, everybody in this room, you know, shows us that that we are and we can be whoever we want to be. You know, we don't have to live. Like, my dad's 50 years old and did 30 of the last 50 years in prison, you know? And he's in prison right now, doing, I don't even know, it's 15 cents. It's like my brother's dead, he, was, he died at 28, and he was in and out. You know, I'm 20 and I'm supposed to get out this year and like I, I see a future for myself, you know? And That's so great. it's just, it's really, it's really nice to know that people care, you know? Yeah. Well now what if you, think about it, the work that you guys have been doing, changing yeah. policies that have an impact on our entire state. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, high five right here, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Like, like, that's the whole thing, all right? The circumstances, you Powerful know. voices. The bill that passed 6160 it doesn't affect me. I'm trying not, not to get too uh, yeah. But, uh, I'm not, I'm not complaining about it. It's not the fact that we were trying to help ourselves. Those who are already sentenced and have been charged, the, this bill it will not help. And it was easier for me to advocate because there's people like you behind us. The bill's Thanks. going to help those who will be coming up behind us. You guys did that. And we should probably go down there. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah about three minutes, yeah. Those who are going to be sentenced or charged with a new crime. I'm looking at the next you know, group of kids that make the same decision I did. I want them to have an opportunity to get out of here and you know, turn their life around. It's just being able to help the juvenile system, trying to make a difference, not just for us, but for the community. Really, it's all about what you do what you do with the help that you get, that you receive, what you do with the animosity that's pushed towards you, what you do with uh, the hate that's thrown, you know, thrown at you, all the shade. I feel like with the support you get from others, it's really up to you what you do with all that. This bill is actually helping not them themselves, but the kids that are coming up behind them. Good. Um, we're really grateful for their advocacy for young yes. people. You guys got some background, we got to hear about it. So, so God, why don't you have a seat? We're going to take one quick We're here for Senate Bill 6160, a very important bill. This bill makes a number of changes to the juvenile justice system, both to line up with evolving brain science and to provide more discretion in sentencing youth. This is an important bill because we think it will help young people to avoid recidivism and we're going to help the community by reducing crime, and we're going to recognize the ambitions of youth who we understand have positive futures. And we want to thank four of them who are here today who are helping us along the road. We want to thank their voices of getting a good bill into law. And thanks for Senator Cooter and all the Our voices are, you know, us. finally being heard. Can you have a smile from the camera for a second? You know, like I said, I've been trying to get this bill passed for four years. I don't know if it was on the legislative session a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. You know, somehow this year we got it passed and it's a little step, but you know, it's a step in the right direction. And I just feel like if we can do this, then why stop there?